Jackson's Valley Campaign was Confederate Marge, Gen. Thomas J. Stonewall, Jackson's famous spring 1862 campaign through the Shenandoah Valley in Virginia during the American Civil War, employing audacity and rapid, unpredictable movements on interior lines. Jackson's 17,000 men marched 646 miles in 48 days and won several minor battles as they successfully engaged three Union armies preventing them from reinforcing the Union offensive against Richmond. Jackson suffered a defeat at the First Battle of Kernstown against Carl Nathan Kimball, but it proved to be a strategic Confederate victory because President Abraham Lincoln reinforced the Union's Valley forces with troops that had originally been designated for the Peninsula campaign against Richmond. On May 8, after more than a month of skirmishing with Banks, Jackson moved deceptively to the west of the valley and drove back elements of Marge. Gen. John C. Fremont's army in the Battle of McDowell, preventing a potential combination of the two Union armies against him. Jackson then headed down the valley once again to confront Banks, concealing his movement in the Luray Valley. Jackson joined forces with Marge. Gen. Richard S. Yulin captured the Federal garrison at Front Royal on May 23, causing Banks to retreat to the north. On May 25, in the First Battle of Winchester, Jackson defeated Banks and pursued him until the Union Army crossed the Potomac River into Maryland, bringing in Union reinforcements from eastern Virginia. Brig. Gen. James Shields recaptured Front Royal and planned to link up with Fremont in Strasbourg. Jackson was now threatened by three small Union armies. Withdrawing up the valley from Winchester, Jackson was pursued by Fremont and Shields. On June 8, Ewell defeated Fremont in the Battle of Cross Keys and on the following day, crossed the North River to join forces with Jackson to defeat Shields in the Battle of Port Republic bringing the campaign to a close. Jackson followed up his successful campaign by force marches to join Gen. Robert E. Lee for the Seven Days Battles outside Richmond. His audacious campaign elevated him to the position of the most famous general in the Confederacy and has been studied ever since by military organizations around the world. Background in the spring of 1862, Southern morale was at its nadir, and prospects for the Confederacy's survival seemed bleak. Following the successful summer of 1861, particularly the First Battle of Bull Run, its prospects declined quickly. Union armies in the Western Theater, under Ulysses S. Grant and others, captured Southern Territory and won significant battles at Fort Donelson and Shiloh, and in the East, Marge, Gen. George B. McClellan's massive Army of the Potomac was approaching Richmond from the southeast in the Peninsula Campaign, Marge, Gen. Irvin McDowell's large corps was poised to hit Richmond from the north, and Marge, Gen. Nathaniel P. Banks's army was threatening the Shenandoah Valley. However, Jackson's Confederate troops were in excellent spirits, laying the foundation for his performance in the Valley that spring, which helped derail the Union plans and re-energize Confederate morale elsewhere. During the Civil War, the Shenandoah Valley was one of the most strategic geographic features of Virginia. The watershed of the Shenandoah River passed between the Blue Ridge Mountains on the east and the Allegheny Mountains to the west extending 140 miles southwest from the Potomac River at Shepherdstown in Harper's Ferry, at an average width of 25 miles. By the conventions of local residents, the Upper Valley referred to the southwestern end, which had a generally higher elevation than the Lower Valley to the northeast. Moving up the valley meant traveling southwest, for instance, between the north and south forks of the Shenandoah River, Massanutten Mountain soared 2,900 feet and separated the valley into two halves for about 50 miles, from Strasbourg to Harrisonburg. During the 19th century, there was but a single road that crossed over the mountain, from New Market to Luray. The valley offered two strategic advantages to the Confederates. Second, 
The valley offered a protected avenue that allowed Confederate armies to head north into Pennsylvania unimpeded. This was the route taken by Gen. Robert E. Lee to invade the north in the Gettysburg Campaign of 1863 and by L.T. Gen. Jubilee. Early in the Valley Campaigns of 1864, in contrast the orientation of the Valley offered little advantage to a northern army headed toward Richmond, but denying the Valley to the Confederacy would be a significant blow. It was an agriculturally rich area, the 2.5 million bushels of wheat produced in 1860, for example, accounted for about 19% of the crop in the entire state and the Valley was also rich in livestock that was used to provision Virginia's armies in the Confederate capital of Richmond. If the Federals could reach Staunton in the Upper Valley, they would threaten the vital Virginia and Tennessee Railroad, which ran from Richmond to the Mississippi River. Stonewall Jackson wrote to a staff member, If this valley is lost, Virginia is lost. In addition to Jackson's campaign in 1862, the valley was subjected to conflict for virtually the entire war, most notably in the valley campaigns of 1864. Opposing forces Confederate Stonewall Jackson's command, the Valley District of the Department of Northern Virginia, expanded significantly during the campaign as reinforcements were added, starting with a force of a mere 5,000 effectives and reaching an eventual peak of 17,000 men. It remained, however, greatly outnumbered by the various Union armies opposing it, which together numbered 52,000 men in June 1862. In March 1862, at the time of the Battle of Kern's Town, Jackson commanded the brigades of Brig. Gen. Richard B. Garnett, Carl. Jesse S. Burks, Carl. Samuel V. Fulkerson, and cavalry under Carl. Turner Ashby. In early May, at the Battle of McDowell, Jackson commanded two units that were putatively armies, although they were smaller than normal divisions. His own Army of the Valley, consisting of the brigades of Brig, Gen. Charles S. Winder, Carl, John A. Campbell, and Brig, Gen. William B. Taliaferro, the Army of the Northwest, commanded by Brig, Gen. Edward Allegheny Johnson consisted of the brigades of Culls, Zephaniah T. Conchaba and W.C. Scott. In late May and June, for the battles starting at Front Royal, Jackson commanded two infantry divisions and a cavalry command. Jackson's division consisted of the brigades of Brig, Gen. Charles S. Winder, Carl, John A. Campbell, and Carl, Samuel V. Fulkerson, the second division, commanded by Marge, Gen. Richard S. Yule, consisted of the brigades commanded by Carl, W. C. Scott, Brig, Gen. Arnold Eltley, Brig, Gen. Isaac R. Trimble, Brig, Gen. Richard Taylor, and Brig, Gen. George H. Stewart. The cavalry was commanded during the period by Carl, Thomas S. Flournoy, Brig, Gen. George H. Stewart, Brig, Gen. Turner Ashby, and Carl, Thomas T. Manford. Union Union forces varied considerably during the campaign as armies arrived and withdrew from the valley. The forces were generally from three independent commands, an arrangement which reduced the effectiveness of the Union response to Jackson. Initially, the valley was the responsibility of Marge, Gen. Nathaniel P. Banks. In March 1862, at the time of the Battle of Kern's Town, he commanded the V Corps of the Army of the Potomac, and on April 4, he assumed command of the Department of the Shenandoah. His force initially consisted of two divisions under Brig, Jens, James Shields and Alpheus S. Williams, with an independent brigade under Brig, Gen. John W. Geary. At Kern's Town, Shields' division was led by Carl, Nathan Kimball with brigades under Kimball, Carl, Jeremiah C. Sullivan, Carl, Erastus B. Tyler, and cavalry under Carl, Thornton F. 
Broadhead. At the end of April, Shield's division would be transferred from Banks to McDowell's command, leaving Banks with just one division, under Williams, consisting of the brigades of Coles, Dudley Donnelly and George H. Gordon, and a cavalry brigade under Brig, Gen. John P. Hatch, Marge, Gen. John C. Fremont commanded the Mountain Department, west of the valley. In early May, part of Fremont's command consisting of Brig, Gen. Robert C. Shanks' brigade and Brig, Gen. Robert H. Milroy's brigade faced Jackson at the Battle of McDowell. At the end of May, Fremont entered the valley with a division under Brig, Gen. Louis Blenker, consisting of brigades of Brig, Gen. Julius H. Stahel, Carl, John A. Coltes, and Brig, Gen. Henry Bolan, as well as brigades under Col. Gustav P. Clusseret, Brig, Gen. Robert H. Milroy, Brig, Gen. Robert C. Schenck, and Brig, Gen. George D. Bayard. Also at the end of May, McDowell was ordered to send troops to the valley. Thus Shields returned to the valley with his division consisting of the brigades of Brig, Gen. Nathan Kimball, Brig, Gen. Horace S. Ferry, Brig, Gen. Erastus B. Tyler and Col. Samuel S. Carroll. Initial Movements On November 4, 1861, Jackson accepted command of the Valley District with his headquarters at Winchester. Jackson, recently a professor at Virginia Military Institute and suddenly a hero at First Manassas, was familiar with the Valley terrain, having lived there for many years. His command included the Stonewall Brigade and a variety of militia units. In December, Jackson was reinforced by Brig. Gen. William W. Loring and 6,000 troops, but his combined force was insufficient for offensive operations. While Banks remained north of the Potomac River, Jackson's cavalry commander, Carl Turner Ashby, raided the Chesapeake and Ohio Canal and the Baltimore and Ohio Railroad. In the Romney expedition of early January 1862, Jackson fought inconclusively with two small Union posts at Hancock, Maryland, and Bath. In late February, Marge, Gen. George B. McClellan ordered Banks, reinforced by Brig. Gen. John Sedgwick, across the Potomac to protect the canal and railroad from Ashby. Banks moved south against Winchester in conjunction with Shields's division approaching from the direction of Romney. Jackson's command was operating as the left wing of Gen. Joseph E. Johnston's army, and when Johnston withdrew from Manassas to Culpeper in March, Jackson's position at Winchester was isolated. He began withdrawing up the valley to cover the flank of Gen. Joseph E. Johnston's army, withdrawing from the Centerville Manassas area to protect Richmond. Without this protective movement, the Federal Army under Banks might strike at Johnston through passes in the Blue Ridge Mountains. By March 12, 1862, Banks occupied Winchester just after Jackson had withdrawn from the town, marching at a leisurely pace 42 miles up the Valley Pike to Mount Jackson. On March 21, Jackson received word that Banks was splitting his force, with two divisions returning to the immediate vicinity of Washington, D.C., freeing up other Union troops to participate in Marge, Gen. George B. McClellan's Peninsula Campaign Against Richmond, the remaining division, under Brig. Gen. James Shields, was stationed at Strasbourg to guard the lower valley, and intelligence indicated that it was withdrawing toward Winchester. Banks made preparations to leave the valley personally on March 23. 